Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to another episode of In the Studio. I'm Lynn Weaver. Our topic is the Battle of the Books, which is an event taking place in Davis on October 15th to benefit the Hattie Weber Museum. And my guests are Dr. Andy Jones of the UC Davis uh, writing program, a poet, an interpreter of poetry. Andy has taught classes on T.S. Eliot and poetry of the beat generation and close reading of poetry and as well as the advanced poetry writing workshop. He's done other things. He happens to be the Poet Laureate of Davis, and he also has the time for a radio show. Now, what radio show do you host? Thank you, Lynn. I host Dr. Andy's Poetry and Technology Hour on KDVS, and I've been there since the year 2000. So uh, 15 years now on the air talking about poetry and technology. A lot of poems flowing. Absolutely, and right. many poets. Like your show, it's an interview show, so I get to welcome new people every week. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, Shelley Dunning, she's the co-sponsor of the event with the Avid Reader, a resident of Davis, the mother of four, and the well-known promoter of Frugal February. And you might wonder what this is. It's an experiment that Shelley has done with her family. And it was so interesting that it made ABC Good Morning America. And you might wonder what that is. It's a story of a family trying to beat the lures of consumerism by not spending any money during a whole month. Welcome. Thank you. And then we have Kate Duran. She's a writer, a communication director and board member of the Smith Lemley Opis uh, Syndrome Foundation. And she's also the coordinator of the new parent support group, I believe, at Mother and Baby Source. Andy, Kate, Andy and Kate are co-authors of the book of poems and essay titled Where is Duke? Yes which is one of the books entered in the Battle of the Books. Welcome all. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Now, Shelley, I'm going to start right with you and ask you, tell us more about the Battle of the Books. Sure. And uh, Yeah. Well, uh, Battle of the Books um, will be a first event sponsored by um, the Davis Store. The Davis Store is a little project that my family and I started this past summer. Um, it's in progress, but it's basically a little souvenir shop. And the goal of the Davis Store is to um, make enough money to put on events to raise more money for local nonprofits. So our first event, Battle of the Books, um, is to benefit our very special Hattie Weber Museum. And it is a take on an event that um, we, um, the authors and myself, and many, many parents in Davis um, have long wanted to be a part of. Um, our elementary schools in Davis and um, our junior highs participate in Battle of the Books at those levels. Yes. And every year, we as yes. parents are um, fortunate to be judges in our children's um, activities. So rather than reading uh, children's books, we have taken uh, six wonderful Davis authors. The talent in Davis is amazing. Um, chosen five books, yes. and we have challenged Davis readers to form teams, uh, divide up the book list, read a book, and then come to the event where the authors will uh, challenge their knowledge and so, their comprehension. So the author themselves will be present. Yes, and, and that's the exciting thing about this event is Davis um, has some pretty impressive talent. And to be in the same room with all of those authors while they're quizzing you on their works um, it, it's is It's very pretty fun. thrilling. It's very thrilling. What a wonderful initiative. And uh, you, um, so if, say, I would like to participate, 
Shelley, what would I do? Well, when you choose to participate, and I know you will, um, you <laughs> will simply find a group of friends, um, and your team can be three to five people, and we're very flexible. So if two of you would like to form a team and you'd like to read all the books, that's great. If you'd like to get five people on your team, um, choose the book, um, get your team members' names, go to the davisstore.com, um, and click on the events tab and register, and then read the books and well, that, show up. That's fabulous. Now, um, we have a, a poster of the event, and uh, I would like to show it so that uh, we can uh, get uh, uh, the dates and the where and all that. And uh, so it's October 15th, and as Shelley just mentioned, you can go to the Davis store and register, and I believe it's a very, when, very minor uh, uh, registration fee. Yeah, yeah. And, and so um, this is how you do it. And on October 15th, seems very, very soon to have read all these books, but you can read only one. That's the right. Way I understand it. Yes. Okay, well, that is good. Now, um, Shelley, one more question for you, and then I'll go to Andy and Kate. Um, where's the battlefield? The, battlef the battlefield is St. James um, Memorial Hall, and that's located on B Street um, next mm -hmm. to St. James Church. Yes. Um, and the event will begin at 6 o'clock. We'll have food. We'll have wine. Um, and the focus, as Andy and Kate will tell you, is really on fun that night. So if you choose not to compete that night, you would just like to come support the Hattie Weber Museum, sign up on the website. Um, come, have a glass of wine, uh, root for your friends, and, and meet the authors. Um, that's really going to be the highlight of the event. Uh, that That's wonderful. Now, um, Andy and Kate have co-authored, and before I, I come to your book, which I haven't read, but I'm looking forward very much to reading it, um, I would like to uh, direct our camera to the uh, five books uh, that are uh, have been selected uh, for this event, and uh, one is Indelibly Davis by uh, former uh, Chancellor uh, Larry Vanderhoof, and then the other one is the very fame by the very famous author John Lescroix, uh, and this time it's The Fall. I think it's his latest book, isn't it right? And then another famous author is um, um, Stan Robinson, Kim Stan Robinson, and this is Aurora again, his latest book, and perhaps. You can help me, Andy, with the other two books, and what are they? Sure. One is Landfalls by Naomi Williams. And she's also a Davis. She's a, a Davis author, yes. and she's been a member of many writing groups. And uh, Landfalls has really uh, worked its way into the uh, adoration of the critics. Yes. Uh, people across the country have highlighted it for praise. It's a historical novel about a, uh, a French sea trip that took place in the 18th century. At first blush, it might not seem like a, um, an enthralling topic, but I'm reading the book now, and I think it's very engaging. It and is. I've heard uh, Naomi read from it, and it's, it's just terrific. So I would encourage people to check that out. And then the fifth book is Where's Juki? And as you mentioned before, this is a book that Kate and I wrote together about the joys and challenges of raising a son with special needs. Yes. And as a poet, I've contributed the uh, 30 or so poems in here. And Kate is an essayist and blogger, and so she's got about eight, uh, eight or so essays in here. Yes, I was intrigued by the fact that it was this, um, uh, this uh, different format, poems and essayist. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking a little more about the book itself. But just as a note, and I'm, it's sort of a note, but a question too. These are all Davis authors, right? We live in a very interesting town, I must say. And uh, I, uh, I have looked I have read several of the books by John Luscra, and I haven't read anything by Stan uh, Robinson because, oh, I don't know, I, I like romance rather than science fiction. So um, now one other um, thing that, that is very important, um, and perhaps I should ask Kate, but please jump in. What were, who selected the books and what were the criteria? I know. I'm being on 
shaky grounds here. Yeah. I don't have to, you don't have to reveal everything. Oh, <laughs> no, you know, I think um, when we first came up with this idea, um, th these were the only authors we invited. Yes. Um, and I think because they all had, um, first of all, they're all very well known, yes. but they all had very recent works. Yes. Um, and so that was, that was kind of the, 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 the main criteria, criteria is yes. they, um, they had very current works out there that people hadn't read yet. Um, and so that was, that was a fun uh, way for us to bring in readers and, and have them uh, read new works. So A great deal of coordination and, and perseverance, I suppose, to organize all this. Oh, yes. yeah, definitely, but I, I have to say I'm so impressed with, um, with the authors. I think, you know, I, I talk to friends across the country who know a lot of these names, and they're, they think it's phenomenal yes. um, that they're participating. And I think for them, they think this is Davis. This mm -hmm. is our Hattie Weber Museum. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I would love to be a part of this. So it's really been a very easy, um, very fun process to organize. Well, I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear. So Kate, um, let's talk a little bit about this book. Uh, is it uh, partic particularly about your son? Yes, so Andy and I have a son who was born with a rare genetic syndrome. He's now 14 years old. And I find that what helps me sort of just get through those challenging days is to think as I'm going through the day, I often actually think about writing it in my head. Maybe that's a little odd, or maybe that's just what writers not do. Not at all, not um, at all. But sometimes yeah. I'm just, I'm actually taking notes in my head and thinking, this moment is so odd, or so crazy, or so mm -hmm. funny, that I have to write it down. Mm -hmm. And so I started uh, writing essays, and I started collecting them together on a blog, and um, all about the sort of joys and challenges of raising this um, very special, um, but kind of, um, Rascally. Rascally yes. boy, right. Yes. And, um, you know, life is not always easy with him, but um, I wanted to share some of the joy that I think is sort of um, hidden um, um, for families like ours because mm -hmm. people sometimes see us on the street and think, you know, um, Oh, that poor family has that huge challenge. Thank God that's not my kid. You know. Yeah, I, I, think I there's a dislike lot of that. that attitude yeah. totally because uh, it is very demeaning and it uh, it doesn't doesn't make sense. Sorry, this is just my editorial here. But um, your essays, so they have different themes, uh, right. different so topics. I yes. wanted to share some of the. Um, some of the things that I think people don't know about, about raising a child like Juki. So um, I wrote about um, some of the happy times with him, um, you know, some of the times that we have cause to celebrate, but I also write about some of the um, deeply um, sad, sad moments. Sad moments, um, of like, course. And Juki, is Juki the name of your son? So his name is actually Jackson, but oh. his sister nicknamed him when Juki, Juki yeah, oh, when sweet. he was a baby oh, and it sweet. stuck. Now I understand you have a, a short excerpt that I've I asked do. you to read. I do. Yes, uh, we, our time is very limited, okay. but hopefully it is short because yes, I'd like short. to go to Andy and have a little bit of his, a little snippet of his uh, poem as well. Sure. So please go ahead, okay. Kate. So this is titled Meet Juki. Meet Juki. Probably more than any other photo I have, this one shows Juki's true self. Yes, he is sitting inside a box on the top shelf of his closet. Yep, that box is dangerously close to falling off the shelf. Notice the artful balancing act with his right foot. Juki lives on the edge. He's never happier than when teetering on the brink, the edge of a high shelf, a rooftop at midnight, or the limit of his mom's patience. We're used to the quizzical looks from strangers. Juki calls attention to himself. I'll have to stop you because we are running out of time. Okay. But very quickly, Andy, would you like to read a little bit? And but this already, you can see how you want more, how don't you? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the purpose. Yeah, you know, the 15 it's minutes in such a right. short time, okay. and I, I apologize for that. I'll read some from the first poem in the book, which is called My Entropy Elephant. About 30 seconds or so? He is my entropy elephant, my kangaroo of chaos. The contents of all drawers will be revealed. All shirts become t-shirts, all gowns strapless. 
If a tree falls in the forest, run to take the ax from his hands. If the water main has broken, he has taken a break. Water seeks its own level, and this boy is a guide. So that's a little lovely. bit from the first poem in Where's Juki? Lovely, Juki? absolutely lovely. Well, um, I'm afraid our time is up. It went very quickly. I am so grateful that you took the time to be on my show. And uh, I wish you the very best of success for this. I think it's going to enrich the life of uh, Davis. Uh, literary and uh, level of, uh, uh, you know, intellect in Davis, and uh, hopefully you'll have it next year as well. That's our hope. Yes. October so, 15th is the date. I want to remind your viewers and that they're all welcome to come join us over at St. James Hall. So, Dr. Randy Jones, Shelley Dunning, and Kate During, thank you so much. And thank you all for being here and for watching in the studio. If you'd like to stream this episode, you can go to dctv, dctv.davismedia.org and we're also, we will be on YouTube. And while you're there, you might want to check out some of our other shows. We have very illustrious guests and fascinating topics. So, and please, I don't want to forget to thank our prestigious uh, technical crew, Kevin, Calvin, and Matthew, and of course, Diane, who is the technical director. Thank you all so much, and see you next time.